guys, welcome back to Pokemon TCG HQ. Um, Alex here again. Um, I just wanted to bring you guys yet another deck skeleton sort of profile. Um, and I'm just sort of going to carry on from my most recent video um, that was built around the sort of turbo metal list. Um, so I did ask the question whether that was the actual correct build of metal at the moment. Um, or if the sort of more conventional way um, is actually the preferred route, route, uh, whichever you prefer, um, to actually playing the deck and actually seeing success with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you the skele a skeleton of um, a Magnezone variant, or Magnezone variants, I should say, um, and hopefully go into a bit of detail into maybe why you would potentially want to play that particular version over any sort of Max Elixir, Solgaleo Prism focused build. Um, so I'll quickly show you the, the sort of bare bones um, skeleton list that I just quickly whipped together. Um, I know people have played it with in, in different ways, um, but this is sort of the bare minimum I would expect to see in a um, Magna Zone list. Um, so of course, I still think your ma your main attacker is this Dustmane Necrozma hitting 250 with its GX attack if you are behind on prizes, um, hitting able to do 220 damage um, and discarding free energy from this Pokemon uh, with Meteor Tempest. So generally knocking out every um, GX, EX Pokemon in the format. Um, of course, there is a couple with 230 and above, but you could play other cards to try and supplement that damage. Um, so this guy is still your main attacker, um, and there's very little reason why it wouldn't be. Um, so the line of Magnazone I've currently put in as a sort of bare bones is a 3-2 Magnemite um, Magnazone line. Um, you should tend to see, depending on the kind of build that you're playing, um, that sort of beefed up a little. Uh, I particularly like this Magnemite because um, of the current meta game where Buzzwell is everywhere. Um, it has the ability solid unit as long as this Pokemon's on your bench, prevent all damage done to Pokemon um, by attacks, both yours and your opponents. Um, so really nice way of actually being able to prevent that sort of bench snipe damage. Um, so you don't really have to worry about your Magnezone being softened up um, for them to potentially later KO the Magnemite. Um, because there is another Magnemite, um, and it's an electric type, which means it's weak to fighting. Um, but as long as you have another Magnemite on your bench, it has um, its retreat cost is reduced by one, or it has free retreat. Um, which is really cool, thinking about it, um, because it potentially allows you to, if you're going second, um, if you play one of the tech attackers, um, Dialga, actually be able to use Overclock turn one, if you're able to get another Magnemite down. Um, which is really cool, um, but I think just for safeguarding, this Magnemite is a little bit better. So Magnezone, um, very little to sort of discuss about here. It's 150 HP stage 2, uh, magnetic, circuit, uh, magnetic Circuit, which is our latest of our sort of Rain Dance Pokemon um, that we've had in the format. So it allows you to, have, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach, attach a Metal Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Um, it has a pretty useful sort of zap cannon attack as well, so it can be an attacker in sort of um, awkward positions, um, particularly if you have two Magnus Zones on your bench and you need a one prize attacker. Um, it deals a sufficient sort of amount of damage, 130, so it's able to two hit most things. Um, but this, it, your deck should be really revolving around this guy um, in terms of uh, getting energy onto your board and being able to um, start dealing damage and taking KOs. Um, I still have a Solgaleo Prism in here because you're playing a Magnezone type deck. You tend to have a lot of Metal Energy anyway, um, and it gives you a chance late game um, and even early game if you start Ultra Balling a lot of the Metal Energies away to really just slam down as many Metal Energies um, from its Radiant Star attack. Um, as, as before, you only play one of them because it's a Prism card and it goes to the Lost Zone over at a the discard pile, uh, but it's such a good card that you it's an auto inclusion in any sort of metal list which has at least seven metal energy, I guess. Um, but yeah, great late game card, um, potentially a good mm, mid game card as well. 
Um, and it's with a choice band, it's doing 190 damage, which is pretty cool. Uh, two Tabulele, um, again, bare bones, so you, you have to play a minimum two Tabulele, um, as with most decks, just to make sure you hit the right supporters that you need and uh, get the right cards you need. Um, I left this at four. As a bare bonus, I guess I should put it as three, so that puts me down to 38 cards. Um, but you would beef this up, in, in all honesty, because, well, dep again, depending on a variant, um, it allows you to evolve your Magnemite into Magna Zones. Um, which is great, of course, skipping the stage one. Um, four triple, pretty standard in every deck now. You need that power of search. You need that en ability to discard metal energies in your, um, into your discard pass. So you can use Mount Coronet, which allows you to once per turn, may put two metal energy put cards from the discard pass into their hand. Again, just helps to synergize with the sort of Magna Zone so you could start a magnetic circuit ability around onto your board and onto your attackers um bridget play a minimum of two because ideally you want to have this turn one with all your pokemon cards um you're not playing any ex pokemon all of them are gx or basic uh, or just basic pokemon in general um that are not ex so you're able to get potentially two magnemites and your dust main down or two magnemites and um i don't know you still get a little prism down if you feel like that's the route you're going to go for um, so it's pretty required. You play two of so that you can actually hope to hit at turn one a lot easier. Um, I think the odds are somewhere on Hayfonte or Verbank, but if you really wanted to work that out, um, yeah, I think it greatly increases your chances. Uh, two Symbia, again, this is sort of the bare bones um, draw engine that you have to minimum. Of course, you beef these up, these numbers up, um, dependent on, I guess, maybe your play style or how you think the deck should run. Um, I'll show you my lists um, afterwards as well, but you would be playing a mixture of Cynthia N uh, because you have the potential to go behind quite early, then you can use uh, Sun Steel Strike, no, Sun's Eclipse, that Sun Steel Strike is the other one, Sun's Eclipse GX to take the knockout, um, and Sycamore as well, just so you can sort of burn through your cards quicker. Um, I put a bare minimum of seven Metal Energies. Um, again, I'll show you the reason why uh, with my lists um, shortly. Uh, but of course, this you know you need my twenty to attack, so seven's a bare minimum. Um, I've seen lifts go up to maybe twelve uh, metal energies, uh, depending on their build. Um, but that's the very bare bone skeleton I'd expect you to be playing if you're playing a Magnezone list. Um, I've seen quite a few different kind of builds, which include different kind of spores um, as well. But what I'll do now is quickly just show you um, what I've just been mucking around with. Um, one of them in particular was something I was potentially playing for Malmo. Um, so the first build I'll quickly show you is this Zoroark Magna Zone build. Um, so ever since the sort of inception of Zoroark, everyone's trying to pair it with absolutely everything. And, you know, I'm kind of no different. I've tried it with this as well. Um, you can sort of play it in a sort of play style similar to that Zoroark Gardevoir build. Uh, where you sort of you are a Zoroark deck, um, and you play sort of supplementary metal Pokemon to for mid to late game. Um, so I've included here. So from that thirty eight cards, uh, these sort of twenty two cards, I guess I put into this deck here. Uh, begin with a four free Zoroark line. So you have trade, you have righteous beating, dealing one hundred twenty damage as long as you have a full bench. Um, but just being able to that, have that draw power um, is really, really important, I think, with pretty much any format or any deck right now. Um, you, of course, you have alternatives such as like Oranguru and Octillery, um, and they sort of play a part in the other build I have as well. I do play one Dialga. Um, sorry, this is the only art I have online. Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier, it's actually a really, really cool um, turn to play. Um, you have Overclock for one metal energy, essentially as a Bianca, draw cards until you have six in your hand. Um, but the main sort of reason I play this guy is for this Timeless GX option. Um, I think it's absolutely busted if you're able to pull it off. Um, so for three metal and two colorless, Timeless GX deals 150 damage, which isn't quite enough to take one hit KOs. Um, but with a choice band, it gives you that option to actually 
take one hit KOs on things like Tapu Lele, obviously any um, fairy, not fairy Pokemon because you're a dragon type, you sort of ignore that, <laughs> Tapu Lele, um, another 180 HP and below EXGX Pokemon. So it could be like, I don't know, if you're playing Buzz or Lycanroc, you use it on, you could potentially use it on Regirock. Um, but it also allows you to use it on non EXGX Pokemon, um, which have HP less than 150 as well. Because if you're able to take, a lot of times people play with seven prize game, Timeless GX almost sort of negates that if they put up a non GX Pokemon or non EX Pokemon. So you can take a knockout on a um, basic that's not an EX GX and take one prize. And then you could potentially Guzma and you shred on another one, which will allow you to sort of convert that um, seven prize game into back into a six prize game because you've taken two turns and taken two knockouts with this card. Um, but of course, it's not built around this card. That's why you only play a one-off, or I play only one-off. Um, left the line of Magnazone um, and the Dustmane, the Quarosma, and Sock Leo exactly the same as what i just shown you in there, in the sort of um, skeleton build, uh, because like I said, you're sort of applying early pressure, potentially taking some prizes with Zorok um, anyway. Um, the Zorua sort of plays another way of being able to activate sun's eclipse gx uh which is pretty cool as well um but of course you're still hoping to hit off the budget probably with an active zoroa you want to have sort of three zoroas down and a, and a magma down as your board um or potentially two zoroas and two magnemites um because you know at the end of the day you are still a magnazone deck um and for you to win the game you will need a mid and late game and that's what magnazone provides um the tabulele counts up to three. Again, it's just so that you hit one of these either tabuleles or Bridget or Ultra Ball in your hand, turn one, so that you can really start putting down all your non um all your Zoro as a Magnemite, so you can evolve into them. Uh, evolve them, sorry. Um and get your deck really going, I guess. Um I play two field blow as well because it seems like this deck, if you have a little look, pretty much your draw engine and your ability bay and your sort of main concept of the deck is going to be using a lot of abilities now if you play Garbodor you're going to have to have at least a few turns without Garbodor active um, or Garbodor being active um, so that you can either trade things away magnetic circuit and sort of take a few prizes and then late game use this Sogaleo Prism to recharge your board with energies from the discard pile uh, free rare candies, um, similar to the skeleton list which I just shown where I took one away. Uh, rescue stretcher, um, I feel is really important because more often than not, they can sometimes target your Magnazones um, and potentially even your Zoroark, and it's cool just to either put them back into your deck or pick one and back up and just evolve another Magnemite and evolve another Zoroark so you can trade again. Four Ultra Ball is pretty standard. Three Mount Coronets, um, I think that's what the minimum you sort of play you potentially could up that to four um but in this version in this variant um i wouldn't because you know you only play seven metal ng and you kind of also play dc as well um so that you can tap the zoro rock um so the support line i've put in is free budget again this deck is even more important that you have budget turn one um two cynthia i left that free guzma i left that I played two Mallow, so it's quite similar to the Gold of our build, so that you can get the turn one Bridget off. Then hopefully you can either Lele or you can have Mallow in hand when you trade it once or twice. Um, and then just grab the Rare Candy Magnazone or any other cards that you wish. Um, search your deck for two cards, shuffle your deck, then put those cards on top of it in any order, um, which is damn near busted. Uh, free end, because I do feel like you do go behind, um, because something will get knocked out. Most likely a Zorua, maybe a Magnemite. One Sycamore. Um, I've never really found myself in a position where um, Sycamore is really detrimental to any deck. I mean, being able to draw seven cards. Yes, it can be quite annoying if you have to um, discard a lot of Evolution Pokemon or a lot of DCEs or uh, your Stretcher or your Rare Candies. The chances of that happening are quite unlikely that you'll have to discard all of them or a good chunk of them so um yeah at least one sycamore i found myself in the position where it's useful anyway otherwise it's just trade bait uh three two three two choice band uh so 
use this mainly sort of for Zoroark and Dialga and Sogolo Prism. Zoroark hit 150, which you then you can sort of just use Necrozma's uh, Claw Slash to do another 60 damage, dealing that 210 in total. Uh, Dialga is the 180 and Timeless GX. Um, and Sogolo Prism doing 190 uh, with Corona Impact is pretty cool as well and it's i mean it's generally never a bad card to have just to deal more damage uh two float stones you do tend to have quite chunky pokemon with big retreat costs free injury retreat two injury retreat on magnazone free injury retreat on necrozma if you needed to free injury retreat on uh, the you know zoroark has two retreat as well so float stone is pretty cool and just so that you have a pivot um if it doesn't get filled blow away i play free um Double colorless energy. Uh, so it's mainly sort of useful for, obviously, for Zorak to attack. It's good for DL because it's timeless. Um, it's pretty useful for Meteor Tempest. Uh, it means you can discard, if you had three metal energy and a two and a DC unit, you can discard a DC and one metal energy, um, meaning that you only need two energy to attack with it again. Um, of course, if you don't have Magnetone, it's not actually that easy to do that. But, you know, at the very least, you can attach one more energy, use Quartz Slash. Um, if worst case scenario um, and I've left it at 7 metal energy so that's build number 1 um, that's Zoroark Magnezone the other variant is a, is the more conventional I uh, don't know where it's gone right so this is the extra 22 cards that are on top of the sort of skeleton build that I quickly showed um, Tech Attacker again, the Alga GX again, just being able to timeless is pretty damn cool. I've sort of explained that already. Uh, the Magnemite, Magnezone line has been beefed up to 4-3 um, because it is more focused on this Magnezone being, able, being on the board. Um, I play, my draw power that I play is Oranguru. Um, potentially not, doesn't actually draw enough cards, um, which is why you would play uh, Octillery. Um, to draw up to five instead of just three. Um, but space wise, this is what I initially put in. Um, but you guys can sort of mess around with this and put in the stage one artillery if you wish. I find it a little bit easier with the Oranguru because it's just a basic Pokemon. And you tend to try and draw enough. Sometimes it isn't, sometimes it is. But yeah. And it's actually got a pretty cool attack as well. So a psychic 60 plus 20 damage, um, 20 more damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active. Pokemon. Um, I play one Mew. Um, again, it's just a nice way of actually being able to copy Dustmane and Crosses attacks, the Algas attacks, so Leops, um attacks, pretty much anything. Um, and it's a Psychic type, so it's able to hit a big card for weakness right now, like Buzzworld GX. Um, but either way, it's pretty cool to like, even just sort of use it as a pivot, use it to overclock, um, to draw six cards, use it as sort of bait to activate uh, Sun's Eclipse um, as you saw in the previous list with um, the Sogaleo Prism focused deck. Uh, free Tapu Lele, um, again you want to be hitting those Bridgettes turn one so you can get these double Magnemite down and Dialga or Mew or Oranguru or even Sogaleo Prism. Two Field Blur, uh, this deck is even more reliant on Magnetic Circuit, uh, particularly again early turns. Um, so you will need to use this to counter garb. Um, two professors letter, um, because you're focused, so focused on this magnetic circuit sort of build, you want to have those energies into hand and have all of them so that you can actually just drop them onto your Pokemon and actually be able to take one hit KOs or just actually be able to attack. Uh, I play super rod over stretcher because you play more energy in this deck and you know, more often than not, sometimes more too much energy can go into this discard pile which is a little bit more detrimental for you so and with mount coronet only being able to take two and you know see that's easily replaceable or field blow of the way uh super rod's pretty cool in, in that respect so you can put some energy back in the deck so you can use your letter again for example uh four archibald three mount coronet two reject again uh trainer lines are free 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 cynthia free guzma free and free sycamore um Again, I, I just, I'm just a fan of Sycamore. Just discard your hand and just burn through with another for seven. I think it's really important. Uh, two choice band again. Um, you can use it on pretty much any of these attackers, which is pretty cool. One float stone. Uh, more often than not, you can probably just actually retreat just by attaching energy. 
uh, from your hand, retreating, mount coronet for two back, and attach them all to your new attacker, um, and still be able to sort of chain attacks as you go. Uh, so this list, I play 11 copies of Metal Energy. Um, yeah, it's not really much to discuss in that. I feel like that's a good amount of energy to have. Um, but this is my sort of quick chucked together build of um, the f conventional Magnazone version. Um, so as mentioned, one of the builds I was testing before Malmo was actually the Zorok Magnazone list. Um, you know, it's PTCGO, but it was generally had pretty good uh, results. But in the end, obviously, I didn't actually end up playing Metal. Uh, so we'll just quickly jump into a game. I'm going to quickly flip a coin and just see which one I'm actually going to show you. Uh, Tails is Zoroark. Heads is conventional. Tails it is. Let's go. Right, where is it? Zorok, Mag. Uh, we are playing against a colorless fairy deck, which tends to mean it is only Gardevoir, which should be a good matchup. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so we don't have the bridge yet, but we do have Tapu Lele. And the Krosma. So we'll bench those two, keep Tapu Lele in our hand so we can use uh, Wonder Tag if we needed it. Ah, we're playing against Sylveon. Um, okay. Okay. I'm just trying to think how we deal with this. Right. It should be a good matchup as long as I get Magnazone out, but he could plead GX it away, which is pretty tad. Um, there's Potan. Sure. I mean, I can't do anything right now with it anyway. Judge, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Yay! As ideal as you can get it. That has actually broken and busted from that charge. But anyway, move on. <laughs> uh, what could be even better than that? So, Bridget. Zorua, Zorua. And go. Hmm. So essentially, we need to be able to knock out this Necrozma. Not Necrozma. Let's see. Um, Sylvian, as soon as possible. He's loose to me. I mean, he hasn't got much in his hand, but he does have a ribbon. Um, not going to be able to knock it out this turn. I don't think. Unless I hit the nuts. But I do have a Bridget for trade bait. We have Mount Coronet to trade away to move into the Potam. If we draw into energies, we can sick them more, and then we can try and get four energies on my active Necrozma and just win. If I do somehow win this very quickly, I'll actually quickly show a standard variant as well. So, Coronet down first, so we don't take any damage from evolving out Zoroas. I probably should have checked my deck was prized. That would have been a good idea. Good job, Alex. You showcase this very well. We have an N, which is great um, because of that magical ribbon we do still need to get magnet zone out there's a metal energy we don't need the metal energy so we'll trade that way too TCE should we apply pressure nah. um, we could apply pressure because we're ending but then we can't retreat on Zoroark. Not unless we get a Magnemite. So, yeah, let's apply some pressure. Just because. Just because I can. We have Mallow and Rare Candy for next turn. Very likely to plea me, which is a bit sad. But we 
they have a flow stone as well, which is cool. Um, put that, we'll put the metal energy into her hand now as well because we have that mallow. And we'll write you. Oh, should have attached choice band. But it's not really an issue. It's very likely to either max potion that Sylvian or something else. Um, there's the field blower. Assuming this energy is going to be discarded as well. We do have Mangazone next turn. There's a Max Potion. Um, there's no letter in this list. If there was letter... Oh, that's a bit sad. I mean, if he please GX is my Magnemite, that's pretty sad, but... I think we're okay. Ah! Judge! Um, all in all, still not too bad. So, we could double Righteous Beating again. Not right, double Righteous Beating. Double Trade again. Then Cynthia. Lele as well. So this can't be discarded. So we might get rid of the Cynthia. Do I guarantee? I'm trying to think whether I guarantee the Magnazone, but then that Plea GX will be annoying. But if they Plea GX, they can't max potion. So. We will go for it. So we need a red candy for sure. Question is now. Do I go for the let the ultra ball now? We'll just pick up the magnet zone. Trade away the metal energy. We're gonna have to trade away that ultra ball too. See what we grab. Two energies. Uh, so we're at Candy Magnemite. So one energy in there. So Pilly GXs and removes the energy. Could be annoying. But it is what it is. We still have DCs in the deck, so. We can just drop another Pokemon. And detach choice band, and it'll be fine. So we have Magnazone. They probably got DCE. Oh, there's the Enhanced Summer. Expected. There's another Eevee. There's the DCE. Sure, sure thing. Okay, give me an extra card, but I guess they need a hand refresh because probably what they've got is not enough. There's rare candy again, but that doesn't help. That's fine, I guess. It's like annoying. Are you ribbon? Nope. And get rid of my Zorox. So it stops me from drawing cards. But he can't use Plea GX anymore. Which is a good thing for us. So we're not going to end him. Drop Magnemite down again. Drop Zora down again. Um, he only does 110 damage, so we don't need another Magnuson, but he could Lysander it. So we'll put the other Mag Magnemite down. Anyway. And we'll trade away. The mallow. 
gives me feels like pretty cool to have. So my NG stretcher. Hmm. More energy there. Attach to Necrozma. The only bad thing is we need to somehow be able to get our NG back, which is pretty sad. So there's another Sylveon. This is one of the grindiest matches ever. I may not even put this online because it's going to take another 10 minutes. Retreat, use Magical Ribbon. I'd only assume is the, is the play. No, maybe not. Um, I'm going to end this turn. Regardless, after evolving, just take the damage onto Magnemite and, Mag and Zoroark. Uh, good thing with Magnemite is, or Magnazone, the 110 damage still doesn't do enough with 30 from Poe Towers. I think it's 30. 30. 3 damage counts. Still leaves it with 10 HP. So that's pretty good in that respect. Um. Very candy magnemite. Boom. Take 30 damage. Boom. Take another 30 damage. We'll end here. We'll trade off to the end so that we can draw into more cards. There's a DCE. So I can kill it with Mag with the Crosma. Which is pretty cool. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Um Can't bring it back. That's a bit sad. We are going to try and take knockouts on everything that's in front of us. So, there's metal energy. Train away with Zoroark, so we don't need that anymore. Uh, try and front load energy onto the active Necrozma. Hit for weakness. We'll just claw slash for the knockout. Take two prizes. There's the Algo. There's a Metal Energy. Which gives us an out to using Meteor Tempest. If it doesn't discard DC and a Flare Grunt onto a Metal Energy, which would be pretty sad. There's some short double puzzle for an enhanced hammer and something else. One can only assume. Ah, uh, and a parallel. Um, okay, that's fine. The parallel would get rid of Tapu Lele and the Magnemite. Because drawing cards is good. I might stretch her both my Magnemites in my deck into back into my deck. Well, sorry, stretch those two Magnemites in my discard pile back into there as well. So he has been able to remove a lot of energy. So I need to draw into one more metal. Um, and I'm able to Meteor Tempest the Sylve active Sylveon. He is using Magical Ribbon. Essentially for another enhanced damage, um, another flare run. So there's a metal energy. So we're just gonna attach a DC to the active anyway. We'll end because we have four in hand. After the end, we'll have four again. We won't need the other dust main. But we'll might need an ultra ball, so we'll get rid of dust main. We have stretcher and deck, we've seen it in our hand anyway. Um, we don't need another Zorua. We need ultra ball just in case we have to go for another out. So, magnetic circuit. We'll meteor tempest to take the knockout 440 damage due to weakness, which is 
Great, and it leaves our necrozma with free energy left. So potentially, like earlier, I could have, I didn't actually have to play down as stadiums as much. Um, so there's a flare grunt, that's sort of expected. So I now need just two energies. So if I'm going to Ultra Ball um, away to Zorora and Magnazone, check if um, my stadium's in my deck. Oh, and yeah, there you go. The chances of me being able to get another two energy on my Magnazone was pretty high. So that's a, just an example. So the deck ran pretty well, um, considering I was playing against a, <laughs> a deck like Sylveon. Um, but of course, because I'm able to hit for weakness and I have Mantic Circuit, um, it's quite bad for that deck, I feel. Um, but yeah, that's a showcase of one of the builds. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if I was playing the other variant, um, I probably would have had even more um, sort of being able to do more against that Sylvian deck than what I've just done with Zoroark uh, Magnazone. Um, so, but it would have worked out the exact same. I would have just loaded up loads of angels in the Crosma, or I don't know, it would have had to be the Crosma because it's hitting for weakness. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I've told you my thoughts. I do feel the turbo metal or speed metal or Max Elixir Sogalism, Sogaleo, Sogalism, Sogaleo Prism metal build is superior to this, these two variants as well. Um, but I know people have tried these two um, with some success as well. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys have any other ideas, any other thoughts on the two builds I've just shown or whether which metal variant is better. Uh, thank you very much for your time, guys, and hopefully see you soon.